when you want your slideshow to help you bring your point across. It is important that they support your message, your story, to make your audience care, understand, and remember. Scientific topics are often complicated, so our slides often look and feel complicated. But they don't need to. To create clear slides, you have to increase the signal and decrease the noise. This is what today's video is all about. Welcome to Simple Points. If you've missed out on the part one on how to adjust signal and noise in data visualization, check out the link to my video. To reduce noise and increase signal in our slides, we will need our handy tool, the signal to noise machine. The signal to noise machine has two control panels, one controller for noise on the left hand and one controller for the signal on the right hand. Signal is what we want to communicate. Noise, on the other hand, is stuff that's there but is not really part of our communicative intention. These two controllers can be independently adjusted, so let us use this conceptual tool to look at how we can create clear and impactful slides. Here's a typical slide that should feel familiar, and it also reflects my academic background. I am a speech scientist. So why is speech science important? Among many other things, speech science helps us treat speech disorders. It helps us teach foreign languages. It helps us describe unknown languages. But you know all that by now because the slide in front of you told you all of that. In a style we are very familiar with, we're shown a question headline and three bullet points containing answers to this question. Why is that noise slider all the way up there though? Well, it may feel a little counterintuitive, but this slide is actually dominated by noise. We get served with lots and lots of letters that are all the same visually and thus it's hard for the eyes to filter out where the heart of the slide's message actually lies. There are good answers to a general and important question here, but they aren't given a chance to actually have an immediate and memorable impact on our thinking. Combine this with the fact that the presenter is probably talking over these at the same time that we're trying to make this information resonate with our previous knowledge and communication will quickly break down completely. So let's clean things up. The first thing we can do is removing all the sentence-like text elements from the answers. Remember, there's a speaker up there who actually saying things like, speech science is useful because it helps us treat disorders. By focusing on the terms that make up the very core of each sentence, we can help to make these important concepts quickly and easily accessible to the audience. We don't want them to sift through clunky half sentences in search of actual information, right? So we eliminated quite a bit of noise already. What else can we do? We can safely strip away the question in the headline as well as remove the bullet points. Again, the speaker will be actually asking the question, why is speech science useful? And the purpose of the bullet points is giving multiple good answers to that question. In short, the answers are the core message here. Additionally, the actual visual nature of the bullet points serves no actual purpose. Why should we want to present these great and far-reaching ideas in a way that looks like a to-do list, ready to be just checked off, right? Now, they each stand for themselves, not contained in a suggested higher hierarchy. So let's actually give every one of them the importance it deserves. Meaning, let's place each of them on one of three separate slides to be shown in succession. If we present these answers in a manner like this, the concepts are given room to breathe, if you will, room to resonate in the audience's minds. Our audience now has a chance to experience the flow of associations and make new connections between our information and what they already know and think. Now we've reduced the visual noise to a minimum and this again frees up the listener's mental resources, enabling them to actually listen to what we have to say. But again, we can still greatly improve on this by cranking up the signal slider. As of now, the signal is still very low. First, let's do the obvious thing. Let's actually put all that white space on the big screen to use. Our carefully crafted noise reduced message won't do us any good if people sitting in the back of the room cannot even read them. We use text. We want it to be readable. Large font sizes and few text elements per slide hugely improve readability and immediately amplify the signal we are sending. And yet, even these slides won't have the impact we want them to have. Fortunately, we've now created the perfect situation to make good use of one of the core principles of impactful slides. Use images. Now we've got something. We have completely eliminated distracting noise and replaced it with very accessible, concrete visual ideas 
that readily support the message we want to get across. Now the audience will be able to not just hear our opinion on the matter, but they will be able to relate to our message, engage with it. Speech science really is tremendously important because it helps improve the lives of people with speech disorders. When I was a student that did an internship in a leading neurological clinic that worked on speech impairments affecting young and old, I experienced conversations with a 40-year-old woman starting crying because she lost her ability to do what she loves, to sing in a choir. I was in a room when a 7-year-old girl dissolved in tears because she was mocked in school for her stuttering. Speech science helps both diagnosing and treating these impairments. And it does not stop there. Learning a new language offers indispensable socioeconomic improvements to many people in the world. I wrote my PhD on a language spoken in Morocco. For the people in Morocco, learning international languages, besides their native languages, offers them an opportunity to leave poverty behind. Speech sciences helps us analyze sound systems and find ways to teach non-native speakers how to use them. And speech science helps us to make sense of who we are. There are over 6,000 languages on the planet, many of which we have not yet described. By some estimates, every 40 days, one of these languages stops being spoken. It dies out. Speech science gives us useful tools to describe important aspects of these languages. Without the speech sciences, we would lose much of humans' cultural history. So I hope that we've seen how to purposely manipulate both the noise and the signal sliders for conceptual slides such as these ones. By reducing text and bullet points, by removing typographic hierarchy, by giving the text room to resonate with the audience, we have decreased noise, visual elements that do not support our message. And by using large fonts and support the text with engaging full screen images, we create impactful and memorable slides that will stick with the audience long after your talk. Again. The concrete example was intended to show you the logic behind modulating signal to noise and how far we can actually push it. Every step on a continuum might be justified by one reason or the other, but should be always an intentional decision we are actively making to support our message.